Welcome to the Argonauts. My name is Tyler and I live with my partner Ben on a 28 foot sailboat called Our Choice. We're both 23 years old, we're living on a budget and are definitely beginners when it comes to the liveaboard lifestyle. Subscribe to follow our journey as we travel slowly around the world. Hi! We're going to be exploring set a lot in this video, but we also finish off the work we had to do on the engine and then get the boat ready for winter too. There were a few super windy days while we were in set and it was really nice to watch the waves from the safety of land. There were also lots of really beautiful sunny days in set when we went on long walks around the area. On this day we walked up to the top of the hill there to see the view and we came across an art gallery on the way up which I'm really glad that we found. They'll spike you, Ben. Yeah, they have. Did you not think about that? Well, I did, but I was trying to be careful. You can't see them very well. <laughs> okay, that was a mistake. I should have used the claw. <laughs> What's that from? <laughs> the jungle bird. <laughs> we need to go for far. Sing it. Oh, pick a leaper. And then you pick up raw paw. Next time beware. Don't pick the prickly pear with the paw. When you pick the pear, try to use the paw. So. <laughs> Quite tasty. What does it taste like? Um, I've never had one. It reminds me a bit of pomegranate actually. Yeah. Mm. Maybe if we take one and wrap it up. 
and cut it up properly. I don't want to get spikes in my mouth. Whoa. It's a cool colour. Very pomegranate. Oh, oh my. Oh, I keep making the same mistake. <laughs> So while the head of the engine is uh, out and it's easier to access everything, I need to do a quick oil change and change the fuel and oil filters as well. So what are you doing now? Uh, sucking the old oil out. And you're going to use one of these pumps because you can't really access the um, oil drain at the bottom of the engine so you've got to pump it through the hole where the dipstick goes. How will you know when it's empty? Oil will stop coming through the pump. Yeah. Then I think oil's got to start coming through the pump first. <laughs> Which I can't really tell if it is. I think there is a bit actually. Yeah? Yeah. We ended up having to wait a while for the engine to be ready and so decided that we would leave the boat in set for three months over winter while we renewed our visas in the UK. We don't think that our plan to escape the Schengen area in Gibraltar would have worked anyway and leaving the boat in set meant that we'd have a head start the following season when trying to get to Tunisia or Croatia with the hope of actually leaving the Schengen area. Go in the cave. Under that. Yeah.
what's happening. So we're just reattaching the engine head. Um, the, there's still a bit more work to do, so it's going to take a few more days. The, the exhaust manifold's a bit worn on the outside, the, where the, the, the raw water uh, outlet, and I think that was what was causing the leak into the well, back into the manifold, the water to leak back into the exhaust chamber, rather than <coughs> just heading directly out through the exhaust elbow. So that needs to be remachined uh, so that it's nice and snug to the to the gasket and the manifold. So uh, basically, what? The problem was, or what's caused the problem. The problem was a problem with the, the one of the valves was corroded. Um, so there was a compression problem, which was uh, a cause of lots of the, well, the, the white smoke and possibly the trouble starting as well. Um, but that was caused. The corrosion in the in the valve was caused by. Um, if you look here, I don't know, this isn't... The, the problem was with the exhaust manifold to um, exhaust elbow connection uh, because around the, the gasket from the exhaust manifold yeah, it was all pitted um, rather than sharp corners. It's, I can't show you at the moment because it's, it's uh, being remachined and resurfaced at the, at the point where the, the gasket sits. But uh, that was the problem. And um, yeah, that 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 just meant that the the water was coming <clears throat> out of the in, in, instead of just going straight out the outlet and into the exhaust elbow, <clears throat> it was seeping through and then back into the exhaust manifold, which was causing some corrosion and, and problems, uh, which is yeah, what's damaged the the valves. And hopefully this week, though, uh, we'll be able to get it all back up and, and running. The, the valves have been reshaped and cleaned up the inside of the engine. Hopefully it will be running much better than it was before. So it's been fully serviced now, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully a few of the little problems will be gone. I'm trying to clean the flywheel at the moment, specifically I think the, the magnets, which which let it know, uh, I don't, I'm not sure, they, I think it sends signals to the pistons or something when it passes, and uh, they're too dirty, so I don't know. The engineer explained it uh, in French. <laughs> I just know I'm, I'm meant to be cleaning the flywheel at three specific points. So what is, um, what was the main problem with the engine then? Yeah, so the, the main problem with the engine was that the there was water seeping from the exhaust manifold uh, between, uh, at the join between that and the exhaust elbow, it was um, the water outlet was leaking into back into the exhaust manifold which has caused some corrosion in the valves which was the cause of the compression problem which is why we were seeing uh, white smoke and and um, <clears throat> it was tricky to start uh, but now the valves have been sorted we're getting the um, the surface uh, of the exhaust manifold that connects to the exhaust elbow resurfaced to seal up that leak and yeah hopefully when that's all done because and the exhaust elbow as well that's been recently replaced and i think they've probably done that to try and fix the problem without yeah, wanting maybe. to replace the exhaust manifold um and because the engineer said i don't know there's not much left in the exhaust manifold to yeah. cut down for resurfacing so Oh, if it goes again, then we'll have to get it replaced. Yeah.
But it's getting, it's nearly, nearly done now. Yes, it's nearly done. It'll be ready before we have to go. Yeah. Not sure they will do it. Fishing? Well, they're all kind of just sat there, aren't they? Surely they're fishing. I don't know what else they'd be doing. They're all in very, they're all very close to each other. Yeah. To be fishing as well. Yeah. I can't believe how big they are. What are you doing? Uh, vacuum sealing at our clothes uh, that we're not taking back to the UK. So that they don't get all mouldy. Looks very funny. So this is the exhaust manifold come back after the uh, face of the, for the gasket for the machine uh, exhaust elbow has been machined and this is what was causing the problem with the engine before there was corrosion between the water outlet and the exhaust outlet here which let water get from the outlet into the exhaust which has damaged the engine but now it's been machined off so hopefully it won't leak anymore. This is Ramald, the, uh, <laughs> the engineer. <laughs> Hello. We managed to get the engine sorted out completely the day before we left the boat. Um, in total, we spent around £800 on different parts and the mechanic's time. But yeah, it felt very good to be leaving the boat with a working engine ready for us to come back to. What you doing, Ben? Uh, filling up the fuel tank before we leave. How come? Uh, if there's less air in the tank, then you, you basically you can stop the microbes growing as much and stuff. There's a bit of additive in it as well. I put a little bit more in than usual. Just to stop any uh, diesel bugs growing whilst we're away. And also, if it's full, you get uh, less condensation and water. Yeah, that's true. Into it from the sides of the tank. Before leaving the boat, we tidied up loads and cleaned the inside really well to try and avoid returning to a mouldy interior like we did when we left it in Felix Ray boatyard for a couple of months over winter the year before. We also put a cover over the windows and door to hopefully keep the inside nice and dry. Well, we're, we're leaving the boat now. It's very sad. It's I very sad. I think we've got everything we needed to done though, so it should be completely fine. So, yeah, you're not going to see it for another three months. Very sad. What did you get sorted yesterday? Yesterday? Oh, the engine. Yeah, the engine's fixed, so that's good. The day before we leave? Yeah, one day before we left. <laughs> Good though. Yes. I'm glad the engine's fixed this.
Do you think it's less than 20 kilograms? Oh, hopefully. Might be. It's close. <laughs> we'll have to put more layers on if not. Say goodbye. Goodbye, babe. I thought you were going to kiss it then. Kiss it? No. <laughs> oh. Funny. I thought it would be a nice trick. Can you see the bird? Yeah. There's a sailboat. Maybe some tree knots going the other way. Nice shoes out of the train. Thanks for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and leave a comment to let us know what you think. Subscribe too if you haven't already and turn notifications on so you won't miss a video. Thank you so much to everyone who's been to my coffee page and donated money to help us keep travelling. If anyone else would like to do the same, there's a link to that page and to PayPal too in the description. Thanks again for watching and in next week's episode we'll be returning to the boat in set after spending three months catching up with friends and family in the UK. I spent the time we were there catching up the videos so that they're closer to real time and I'm really excited to start sharing some sailing again.